Okay, so in this video, I'll talk about Pareto efficiency. All right, Pareto efficiency. Um, sometimes I call it Pareto optimality, uh, both of which means the same thing for me, at least in this course. All right, so what does that mean? Um, once you draw the uh, Edgeworth bucks, uh, in the previous video, we talked about um, how to answer the question, is there a mutual gain from trade at some particular allocation? And we can ask that question for any allocation, right? So if the answer to this question is yes, well, then the allocation is not Pareto efficient. If the answer is no, the allocation is Pareto efficient. So let me uh, formally define an allocation, an allo any allocation, well, an allocation uh, X is Pareto efficient, Pareto efficient, if and only if, this is what if means, if and only if, one, X is uh, feasible, right? So if something, an allocation is not feasible, there's no point of talking about Pareto efficiency, all right? It has to be feasible first, but that's not enough. Two, there is, uh, well, let's put it this way, it's shorter. Mutual gain from trade at X is not possible. Okay, so that's it. An allocation X is pretty efficient if and only if X has to be feasible and two, mutual gain from trade at X is not possible. All right. Some textbooks also define Pareto efficiency as follows. An allocation is Pareto efficient if there is no way to make one agent better off without hurting the other agent. That's exactly what we meant by mutual gain from trade is not possible. All right. It's just um, another way of uh, saying the same thing. All right, so I'm gonna to stick to this definition. An allocation X is proto efficient if and only if X is feasible and two, mutual gain from trade at X is not possible. I mean, that is, there is no other feasible allocation, feasible allocation Y such that the followings, the following condition, conditions hold. UAY is greater than or equal to UAX and UA, uh, UB, um, UBY greater than or equal to UBX and one of these inequalities are strict. One of these inequalities, inequalities is strict, right? So an allocation, X is pretty efficient if it is feasible and there is no other feasible allocation, Y, such that both agents having higher utility than uh, allocation X and one is strictly higher utility. I mean, one, the agents are, I mean, there's a win-win situation, all right? So if we trade, if we exchange, we both can win. If there is, a, if there is no such situation, well, then it is proto efficient, okay? It's proto efficient, so it's efficient, all right? It's like we basically exhaust all possible mutual gain uh, situations. And so it is efficient. Uh, that's, that's sort of the idea. Well, the negation of this uh, statement is important because proving an allocation is proto efficient is pretty difficult. Uh, we will later talk about Pareto set contract curve and I'll tell you how we find all set of Pareto efficient allocations, at least once the utility functions are, you know, nice. 
Um, however, this question is hard to answer. Uh, I mean, is an allocation Pareto efficient? Well, well, you have to make sure that there is no other feasible allocation satisfying this. But in the Edgeworth box, there are, so my X is here, and there are infinitely many possible uh, Ys, potential Ys that you have to check. And so sometimes verifying this is very difficult. Um, so it is usually easier to show that an allocation is not Pareto efficient, all right? An allocation, allocation, a, well, a feasible allocation, a feasible allocation, X is not Pareto efficient, if and only if um, there is, um, well, let's, let's put it this way, mutual gain, mutual gain from trade at X is possible. That is, there exists a feasible, a feasible allocation, allocation Y, such that the following conditions hold U of Y greater than or equal to U of X. So agent A having higher utility. Um, agent B also having higher utility, U, B, X, and so this is and, and one of them is strict, is strict, okay? So if there exists such Y, well, then the allocation is not feasible. So I don't know if you can see that, but again, showing that something is not Pareto efficient is easy because all you have to do is to find one. There might be many, but just one. Find one allocation Y where both agents are having higher utility. If you want to show that this allocation X is not, it is Pareto efficient, well, you have to show that every Y in this box is going to, uh, uh, is, is, is not going to satisfy this, all right? So therefore, you have to check these conditions for every Y in order to show that an allocation is Pareto efficient. However, in order to show that an allocation is not Pareto efficient, all you have to show is that one allocation Y satisfy this condition. So the conditions are exactly the same. It's like in here, all I have to find one such Y satisfying these. And here I have to show that no Y satisfy this, meaning all the Ys are not going to satisfy these. Either, I mean, either this will not be true or this will not be true or this will not be true. All right. So let's do some exercises. Um, so here I have an Edgeworth box, but I will need a, a bit formal, uh, I'm sorry, a bigger picture. So let's say this is my Edgeworth box. This is where agent A is, agent B is, all right? So what I would like to have, um, so I'm gonna pick a point, all right, X. Let's suppose the indifference curves are such that this is UA, all right, the indifference curve for agent A, and then this is UB, okay? So they're tangent to each other at infinitely many points, all right? But what matters is all these points are better than set for agent B, and all these points are better than set for agent A, and all these points, uh, they are, I mean, agent A and B are indifferent to X. So the question is, are there any Y where both agents are having higher utility? Well, here, if you pick your Y here, all right, so if Y is in this region, in this blue region, well, it's going to make agent B happier. So this is going to hold, but this is not going to hold because it means the lower indifference curve for agent A. 
If you pick your y here instead, well, this time the first inequality will hold, the second will not. If you pick an allocation here, if your y is here, you're gonna, so both of those inequalities will, uh, will not hold, all right? Same for here. If you pick your allocation here, all right, if this is where your y is, where the indifference curves of agent A and B are tangent to each other, well, what happens is that uh, both agents are having exactly the same utility, so these inequalities are actually going to satisfy, but the third condition will not be satisfied. So you have to make at least one agent um, strictly happier, all right? I mean, think about this. It's like we start X and then we do some exchange. You give me bananas, I give you apples. And at the end, we end up at point Y. But the thing is, is like uh, both of us are indifferent between X and Y. So then the question, why did we make any trade? I mean, it really doesn't worth it. So therefore, there is really no Y and, and, and that will make both agents happier and at least one of them strictly. It means mutual gain from trade is not really possible in this example and hence X must be proto-efficient. Okay? Very good.